Another book that, that's actually way more common and popularly referenced is the so-called Book of Enoch. Now again, this is where the fraudsters will come in, the con men. They see when the Bible references in the New Testament and it talks about what Enoch said, right, in the Book of Jude. And it quotes Enoch. So then you get someone thinking, saying, well, how could, how could Jude so many years later quote Enoch? How could he do that? It must have been written down in a book in order for him to quote Enoch, right? That's the thing. So, so let's make a book of Enoch. The problem is that Enoch was taken before the flood. So they have to come up with some crazy story. Well, well Noah had it with them in the, in the ark and all, you know, this, this book of Enoch, transfer it, trade it, hand. They have this whole story. I was reading a little bit on this online. I'm like, where do you get this stuff from? You're just making it up. You have no, you have no evidence at all. They're saying, well, you see, Enoch gave it to Methuselah and Methuselah died right at the same year of the flood. Methuselah gave it to Noah and Noah had it. And then... Um, it goes and, and, and they say it goes down to Ham and Ham stole it from his father and then it go, you know it's like where do you get this stuff from? There's no evidence for that at all. There's making stuff up, but people eat it up because it's a story and going oh no one else knows this. Did you know? And then you want to sound all smart and say like, you haven't read the Book of Enoch. <sighs> well, I mean. It's ancient literature. I mean, you don't know this. I mean, you're a student of the Bible and you don't know the book of Enoch. And, and you know, don't fall for that stuff. And someone who's lifted up with pride will try to talk down to you about that. And, you know, and, then, and then Christians might go, oh, I need, to, I, I need to know what that says. I need to figure that out then. Because you feel like, like you're being put to shame. But don't, don't, don't fall for that nonsense. In chapter 7, and this is where the people that get all caught up in this Nephilim stuff, and they want to sound all fan, oh, the Nephilim, the no, don't you know the Nephilim? The Nephilim, yeah, there's a Nephilim. Well, the Bible says giants, because that's what they were. There were giants in the land in those days. Actually, let's turn, if you would, to Genesis chapter 6, real quick. In case you don't know what the Bible says, because this is the passage they all love to just just totally pervert and destroy with their weird, strange doctrines and fables. Jewish fables is what they are. Leave her alone. The reason why they use the word Nephilim is because that's just the Hebrew word. <laughs> it's all it is. And you know what it means? Giants. But if you want to sound real smart, You'll use a word from another language that there's no reason anyone even should know what that word is because it's in an, in an old Hebrew language. And we have the word in English already translated for us. But in order to make yourself sound really smart, you'll use that other word. And you'll transliterate it instead of translate it like the King James Bible translators did because that's all it means, giants. So... Genesis chapter 6, it says, verse number 1, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And repented the Lord, he made him. And he said, basically, I'm going to destroy him, he's going to send the flood, and that's what happens, right? Very simple passage to understand. Until you get someone that wants to turn your head around about this stuff, and they start feeding you this perverted understanding saying, well, do you know when it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men? Why is it saying daughters of men and sons of God? You know why? Because those are angels. Angels. Yeah, angels. The angels married these women. And that's why they were such great, powerful people in the earth because the ain't, they're angelic. They were supernatural beings and they had these superpowers and whatever. And they were the giants. 
But when we read the scripture, first of all, it doesn't say angels anywhere. Yeah, you, you have a real hard time proving that sons of God are angels when the Bible always refers to sons of God as being believers. Now, I'm not going to go in fully and prove all this, but we can just see right here. Look, what does it say in verse number four? It says there were giants in the earth in those days. In what days? The days that we're talking about here. There were giants in the earth. And also, wait, after that, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. So, doesn't it sound like the giants were already there before the sons of God went in unto the daughters of men? Just from reading scripture, like just, just reading it for what it says? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Because the, 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 the sons of God that came in under the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, they became mighty men of renown. When these, these saved men married these unsaved women, and the women were raising their children, they raised them up to be prideful, and to be these, these men of renown and seeking glory and seeking their own profit and everything else. And they became these mighty men of renown. But, oh, but that doesn't sound as romantic as the, you know, these angels. That doesn't sound as cool and as hidden knowledge of these angels coming down and doing this. Well, but you know where they get, they don't, they don't just come up with this stuff all on their own. They go to these extra biblical resources to find this type of information. I'll read from you from the book of Enoch, the supposed book of Enoch and the giants. So in their chapter 7, it says, And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives. This is talking about this, that it has these names and stuff for all these, these demons, right? Or angels or whatever you want to call them. That they made this pact that they're going to go in because they were lusting after these women and they wanted to take wives of themselves. So they, they wanted these women, so they make this pact that they're all going to go do it together. Because the one guy's saying, well, you can't just send me to do it because then, then you guys are going to back, up, back off and not actually do it and then I'm going to get all the blame for this. And they're like, no, 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 we'll go, we'll go do it with you. We'll all do this as, as a group. So they, they get together, it says, and they, all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each chose for himself one. They began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. So here's the stuff where you get this, this demonic knowledge concept from. Well, the demons are giving them all this information. They're telling them to do all this enchantments and witchness, witchcraft and all this other stuff. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants. And do you want to know how we know that the book of Enoch also is a false book. It's actually very easy. Besides the fact that you could go in and find the contradictions of God's word, listen to this. It says, whose height was 3,000 L's. Now, you probably don't know what an L is. I didn't either. But I looked up the unit of measure for an L. 3,000 L's is 11,250 feet. 11,250 feet tall. It's saying that these giants were 11,250 feet tall. Now, do you know how tall it is? That's taller than Stone Mountain. That's like three times the size of the tallest building in the world. That's almost half the size of Mount Everest. And that they had these giants. You know how big their head would be? Like, seriously, I looked this up, okay, because I wanted to see what the proportions were. It wasn't just enough for me to, to, to say how ridiculous it is to say that they're 11,000 feet tall. Their head is 1,500 feet. They would have to be 1,500 big to be in proportion to the rest of their body. Their head. Now, I wasn't able to find how big their teeth would be. But, I mean, if your head is 1,500 feet tall, I mean, think about it. Your head might be, what, about a foot tall, roughly? Right? Your average head size for an adult? Well, their head was 1,500 feet. So, 1,500 times the size of your tooth, like that, that's what their tooth was, according to this book. 
How does anyone take this seriously? I also figured out what their weight would have to be. If their, their, their ideal weight, because there's calculators out there, what your ideal, your optimum weight should be for a 25-year-old giant that's 11,000 feet tall. Do you know what his, 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 his ideal weight would be? Now, it's different because there's different formulas. So there's a range. And forgive me for, the, for, the, for the, how wide this range is because when you start getting real big numbers, then it makes the range like really big. Their ideal body weight would be between 420,000 pounds and 800,000 pounds. They're giants. <laughs> and they're 800,000 pounds and 125,000 feet tall, or 11,250 feet tall. Now, we know, like, I believe that dinosaurs were real, that they were great lizards, right? And we see skeletal structures of, of, of animals that existed that were that big. And we even actually see some fossilized footprints and things like that from great beasts, right? They didn't weigh 800,000 pounds, though. What type of footprints would you see from a creature that's walking on the earth that's half the size of Mount Everest <laughs> that weighs 800,000 pounds? That, I mean, I mean what, what would be this? Oh, that would be good. See, the size of their foot. Because where are you going to walk? But see, no one thinks about these things. What are they going to eat? How are you going to feed a belly that's that big? Like, there's not enough food on the planet. I mean, we think we have problems with food now, right? There's six billion people. On. What about one giant? That's 11,000 feet tall. How fast would he have to grow? Man, I think it's, hot. it's bad enough buying clothing and shoes for my kids. I mean, they grow like weeds. Are you, <laughs> how do you keep up with that? What do you even wear? See, all right. The reason why I'm making such a joke out of this is because it's such a joke of a doctrine. It's such a joke. But you know what I've noticed? Is that the people who want to point to, oh, the Nephilim, this, the Nephilim, oh, look at the book of Enoch, says all this, they don't point that out. The real crazy ones will. Because they'll say, when, when, the, when the spies were went to spy out the land and they come back and they say, well, we were as grasshoppers in their sight. They say, see? That's because they were so big. I mean, we're 11,000 feet tall. Yeah, they're going to look like grasshoppers. <sighs> but the book of Enoch then actually says that this is, that's basically the reason why God sends a flood. It's because of these hybrids, because of these devils. But the Bible actually says the wickedness of men. It's not the wickedness of hybrids. It's not the wickedness of Nephilim. It's the wickedness of men. And then what do you do with the giants that appear like David and Goliath? That's after the flood. God, apparently God didn't do a very good job of wiping out those giants when he sent that flood if there's still giants after the flood. It's frustrating and it's actually pretty angering that, that people could be so ignorant and, and just be so lifted up in pride that they'll fall into this nonsense because it is nonsensical.